Hey everyone, I'm back, and welcome to the No Spoiler Show. Uh, I was gonna dub this the Black Edition, not just for obvious reasons, but because we had two comic book movies coming out around the same time with uh, from two different comic book companies uh, that had the word black in their titles. So we had uh, Black Adam from DC Comics, and we have Black Panther Wakanda Forever from Marvel Comics. And uh, I was going to review both movies in one video, but I had a lot of issues and a lot to unpack with Wakanda Forever that I figured that it was going to probably make that video way too long. This video may actually be too long as well, but I'll place chapters down at the bottom in a timeline so you can skip around as much as you want. I have no issue with that. So, um, that's one reason. The other reason was because Stan right here didn't want to say the word black. Yeah, what are you trying to do? Get me canceled? Nah, we're not trying to get you canceled. But anyway, so, um, I know that a lot of my opinions are not going to be very popular and, uh, a lot of people are not going to like what I have to say and I'm going to probably have a few people who are not going to like me at all as well. And, Excellent. I'm fine with that. More power to you. But I have to be honest about this. And as you can see, I do have a little bit, uh, a little notebook here. Um, I had to write everything that was going on in my mind uh, after I watched the movie. I didn't take this to the movie theater with me, but I did have to write all of this stuff down because I went through a lot of different things as I watched the movie. So I want to make sure I mention a lot of this stuff. Okay, so Let's talk about this, okay? Um, Black Panther, the first Black Panther movie, okay? Um, to me, I thought it was a good movie. But in all honesty, I thought it was highly overrated. I thought it was overhyped. Um, and, and, and in all honesty, I honestly thought that T'Challa was handled a lot better in the movies before and after the first Black Panther movie in Civil War, Infinity War, and in Endgame. I just thought he was handled better, whether it was because of the way it was written or be the way they were written or the way uh, they were directed. Uh, I just honestly thought that, the, that he was handled a lot better in those movies than he was in his own movie. So therefore, I really thought that it was a bit overboard. They, everybody went a bit overboard with the praise for the movie. It's still good, but I just thought it was a little bit too much for that, that a lot of people, you know, just overpraised it. Okay. So, um, and I had a lot of, uh, and I had a couple of issues with the first movie as well, but I still thought it was a good movie. So anyway, um, Black Panther one was about, um, it was about vengeance, but it was also about family and legacy, and it was also about the, the bond between a father and a son. Um, yes, it was very Lion King-esque, but uh, let's be honest, truth be told, the Lion King um, was... Uh, was it took a lot from uh, Shakespeare as well, or Othello, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, you're going to have bits and pieces that are going to be inspired from other bits of art and, and, and literature and whatnot. So, to be fair, you, you we can't make that argument for Black Panther, the first Black Panther movie. Um, so, uh, as far as the marketing went for this movie, I thought it was very uh, emotional, emotionally... Manip manipulative. And I get it. It's because Chatwick Boseman died. Um, and, uh, and, and considering the fact that, I mean, yes, he's acted in other movies and before and after Black Panther, I, I, uh, uh, it seemed like his career was just beginning. So to be cut down in his prime and by cancer really sucks. And, and having someone close to me who passed away from cancer, uh, I mean, I understand how bad and how emotionally uh, 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 exhausting it can be. And so for this movie, I felt that it was emotionally uh, manipulative because uh, they actually, I think, it, it, as far as the marketing goes, it seems like they really wanted you to go see the movie because it was going to honor chat with Bozeman. Uh, 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 and in all honesty, I think that was the wrong thing to do uh, because yes, the movie does honor Chadwick Boseman, but uh, it does it in a way that I think that's in a, in a way that wasn't right. Okay. So, um, 
the reason I'm saying this is because, uh, and there are going to be one or two spoilers, and here's the first one, spoiler alert, as Archer would say, um, T'Challa dies in this movie, um, off screen, and for obvious reasons, and uh, because, you know, Chadwick Boseman passed away as well. So, um, he dies supposedly of this mysterious virus, this mysterious disease, basically, and um, so, uh, the actor may be, may have passed away, but that doesn't mean that the character should be taken out as well. Um, in all honesty, I really didn't want to watch this movie, and the, the reason I went on ahead and watched it is because I wanted to give it a chance, and it was because I thought, from the way it kind of looked, I thought that it would have taken place between... Uh, the events of this happening because of this. So I thought it would happen between the snap and the blip when they all come back. So um, it seemed like it would be a good story where it would show how Wakanda managed without T'Challa being there during that five-year five year time period, okay? That wasn't the case with this. So um, I also believe that... Um, it would have been a lot easier to recast uh, the character as well. And if I remember correctly, um, Chadwick Boseman's family, uh, his brother specifically, said, look, we have no problem. Go ahead and recast, recast the character. We have no issue with that. And I really do think that would have been a, a far better idea. Um, and you could have done it to where, okay, he's been gone for this five period time span. And when he comes back during the blip and at the end of Wakanda forever, you know, you would have had the recasted actor taking his place. Now, yes, it would have been a little confusion, you know, seeing how his chat with was in in game, but still, I think it would have been a passable way to do it. Uh, kind of like, you know, they did it with all of the Incredible Hulks and they did it with, uh, with Terrence Howard and Don Cheadle, as far as uh, Jim Rhodes, War Machine did with the Iron Man, between Iron Man and one and Iron Man two. But basically I thought this movie would be taking place. It would be, would be kind of like how black, they did, how they did the Black Widow movie where they, where it took place between Civil War and Infinity War. So I just kind of went in with the idea, well, hopefully they'll do it right and do it that way. That wasn't the case with this. And to have him die in the movie as well was a horrible idea as well. Um, at least have him die in, well, die of a disease rather, but have him die in a heroic, in a, in a heroic warrior fashion. Have him go to battle with, no more since he's in this and uh and and that way there could be a, a little bit more of a tie between Wakanda and Namor. And I'll get to that why I say it that way um in a little bit. But that I think would have been a better way. Kind of like how Optimus Prime died in in the original Transformers, the movie, the best movie, by the way, of Transformers, by the way. And so uh, that wasn't the case with this. So to me, I think it just would have been, a, a, I think the ideas would have been better. Now, there were rumors uh, uh, after Black Panther and after Infinity War came out that uh, Marvel Studios was thinking already thinking and planning on uh, recasting uh, T'Challa and, and, well, replacing Black Panther with Shuri. Um, which Chadwick Boseman wasn't too thrilled about that, which I understand that because, I mean, he barely just got started playing the character. But in the comics, I think maybe about a little less than five years ago, um, Shuri was the Black Panther, uh, but it wasn't because T'Challa died. Uh, T'Challa was off planet in space uh, uh, in search of vibranium or something like that. Some goofy story. It wasn't really that good. But while he was away, uh, Shuri took the place and, and wore the Black Panther costume and, and took care of Wakanda while he was away until he came back. So it would have played directly into that. But uh, after his, after Chadwick's unfortunate death, I think this movie, and this is rumor, I think this this movie, that, that actually 
sped up the process of going, hey, let's make Shuri the Black Panther. So eh, kind of a little bit of conspiracy theory there, but I think there is some truth to it, given how the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe is going right now. Um, there also was another rumor that the original script uh, for the for this movie, um, the way it was written, it was going to be uh, how uh, T'Challa was going to adjust to be coming back after being five years away, snapped away and coming back to Wakanda and seeing how things were, how things were gone, how things had gone without him, basically. But obviously that had to be rewritten because of untimely death. So I get it. But still, I think the first idea that I had, I think probably would have been a little bit of a better idea. Okay, let's hit the positives on this, which there aren't very many for me anyway. Um, Angela Bassett, legend in the industry, great actor. I mean, she she commands the screen and she does not let you down in this movie. I mean, she's gives such a give such powerful performances in this movie. She won't let you down in this. All right. And this is number two. The other positive thing. This is more for me personally. Um, Namor. Um, not Submariner, not Namor the Submariner, but Namor. Um, I always kind of wondered, you, you've seen the character now, but he has wing, uh, feathered wings on his ankles and that's how he kind of flies around and moves around and whatnot. And I always kind of wondered how that would look uh, as far as the character goes. They really didn't do him justice in animation. So uh, it, I thought, or, or in video games too, uh, but I could be wrong. I, it, a, lot of, a lot of time has passed. But anyway, I think uh, that... It, it, it was interesting to see how he moved around, especially in battle, you know, with the wings on his on his ankles uh, fluttering around and getting him around, basically. So those were the positives for me. Now, for the negatives. Um, <sighs> Shuri is a sidekick, not a side chick, but a sidekick. Um, and the reason I say that is because it, she's like, uh, who is it? What's the character's name? Money Penny for Bond. She's T'Challa's Money Penny uh, to to uh, Money Penny's Bond. Basically, she's the one who invents all of his gear, basically, and helps him out. And to me, it was really a bad idea to have her move up to promote her from side character into a main character and expect her to carry the movie. Now, I'm not knocking Letitia Wright's the uh, the uh, Letitia Wright the uh, actress who plays Shuri, um, her her acting abilities. I just think it was a bad idea to have that character be the center character for the entire movie. Uh, she's good in 10, five or 10 minute intervals and she's there to, you know, quick whips and, and banter, witty banter and, you know, give a little nudge and a little competition, competition and, you know, a friendly school, uh, a friendly sibling rivalry to her brother, basically. So I just don't think it was a good idea to have her um, become the jump from sidekick to, to main character of the movie. Okay. Um, another thing about this that's wrong is that there's no charm in this movie. Uh, Chadwick Boseman brought charm to the movie and, and gave T'Challa charm. And I think there's this huge hole missing because of that. Um, the movie, in all honesty, was just a little, just kind of, eh, kind of somber, kind of depressing in a sense. I mean, I think I heard one laugh in the theater at one joke, and I even heard people talking, not very loud, but kind of murmuring, you know, uh, down in far front in front of me, and to my left, your right. Um, and it, it wasn't horrible, but I think that really says something to how the movie was going. Um, the other thing, um, Riri Williams, annoying character. Sorry, I, I think that she was made to basically be Shuri's sidekick for the most part. She was the one making the jokes and witty banter and whatnot. Um, she had basically taken Shuri's place. So, but annoying character, I, I just didn't, it just didn't work for me. Um, and, and, and in all honesty, that leads to one other issue that I had, which was that um, 
uh, she like American Chavez in uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. She, uh, Riri Williams was a MacGuffin, um, and um, she was shoved into this movie. There was no reason for her to be in this movie again, just like America Chavez. There was no reason for her to be in this movie. Uh, it was just pointless. And again, well, I shouldn't say again, but it also uh, uh, affected, which is another thing that really bothered me about the movie, was the length of the movie. It was too long. And because uh, we had to go have Riri Williams in it, it made the movie too long. We didn't have to have her in there. But I get it. Uh, Ironheart is going to have a, a, a series on Disney Plus and the mouse had to put his two cents in. Hey, folks, ha, uh, do you like Iron Man? And do you like Black Panther? Well, uh, get ready for Ironheart on Disney Plus. Subscribe right now. Hi, dog. Ha. Huh? So I can, I can see why they did it, but it, it it's just such a waste of time and a waste of a character. In all honesty, to have her in there. So um, another problem, another issue that I had was. I think this movie really was going to was really trying to start something between groups of people. OK, I don't know if anyone else noticed it or if it was just me, but it really did seem like uh, there was a lot of racial things in this movie that, you know, I can see people from both groups coming out of this movie and saying kind of giving each other the side. I kind of like, mm, I don't know about mm, I don't know about them. So. It's it's really on the edge of I me mean, almost starting crap between two different racial groups of people. And of course, you have white people who are being called and labeled colonizers. And and I'm sorry, that was dumb. I mean, you, you had no problem with uh, uh, Cap, with Cap bringing Bucky, the colonizers bringing uh, Bucky to Wakanda to be rehabilitated. You had no issues with the colonizers when you fought Thanos on Wakandan, uh, Wakandan soil. And you had no problem joining the colonizers, fighting Thanos one last time in Endgame and putting a stop to his madness. So that right there, in my opinion, is, and again, you may not agree with me on that, but it's just like, okay, it is time to move on from that stuff, okay? So, uh, no more. Um, let me explain something first about Namor. Uh, Namor the Submariner, that's his actual name. Now, I'm not a Submariner guy. Uh, I, I known of the character for a long time. Uh, he predates Aquaman, but most people more than likely got more or less introduced to him in the Fantastic Four, where he met the Fantastic Four and they fought against him. And he had a thing for uh, Sue Richards, the invisible woman, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic's wife. He was always kind of a little bit of an arrogant prick for the most part. So um, it's a little inside joke for me that I made for myself just because simply... And, then, and it's not, again, not to knock the actor, but he seems like a, a Spanish novella um, um, actor, basically. Kind of hams up the screen a little bit, in my honest opinion. And before I forget, uh, Namor is, um, uh, 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 he got his name, and he's the only one who pronounces his name that way, by the way. All of the other characters in the movie pronounce him, pronounce his name as Namor. But anyway, um, a Spanish, as a as a child, a Spanish priest saw him as he a, a, the Spanish priest saw him and called him El Niño Sin Amor, or the child without love, or the boy with no love, basically. So, sin in amor, sin sin amor, sin amor, amor. I mean, sin amor, basically. So that's how that came about, which is kind of goofy in my opinion. So. Um, but the reason I do that is, be, like I said, he seems to comes off as a, like a Spanish soap opera and I can just see him breaking the wall. I am the child without love. And, you know, as they're filming on the set, you know, it's like the actor, other actors are going, who, 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 who are you talking to? I'm speaking to the people in the audience. And the, the other actors are going, what? And, and, and the director's going, 
<laughs> just run with it. Go with it. Go. Just just do it. Uh, okay. No more. Namor, why are you out to destroy the surface dwellers, you know? So, uh, it, it to me, it's kind of a little bit of a joke that I had for myself. It kind of, I guess, kind of helped me get through the movie, I guess, to, to a certain extent. Um, but it does remind me of that scene in uh, The Emperor's New Groove when Kronk is talking to the angel and the, uh, and the devil on his shoulders and Yzma's going, and, and Pacha and Cusco are going, <laughs> so, um, but that's what, where that comes from for me. So, um, as far as Namor goes, um, he's not an intimidating villain, in all honesty. Now, Killmonger, one of the things I really liked about the original, uh, the first Black Panther was because he, uh, Killmonger was, a, a, a actually a very good villain, outside of Thanos, of course, but he was a good villain. Now, I think they try to recreate that with Namor, uh, but... I don't think he's intimidating enough and he doesn't come off as a as a good villain in my honest opinion but then the majority of the Marvel Cinematic Universe villains aren't very good anyway. So, the other thing that I had about this that I had against this was the CGI special effects. Um now that was an issue I had with the first Black Panther movie. Now, I don't know if they used the same uh uh CGI effects uh studio um, that they did in the first Black Panther or not to, but in all honesty, and it's not the environment or the vehicles or anything like that. It's more or less when Black Panther, it's more or less the characters when Black Panther is in it, when Tatala's in his armor, when Shuri is in the Black Panther armor as well. And it, it looks very video game like. So uh, I had a little bit of an issue with that. It, it just moves on and looks almost like it's like, couldn't you up the CG effects a little bit more in this? But they kind of didn't as far as that went. Uh, the other issue is, where are the men? Um, which is why I kind of get the impression that this should have taken place between the blip because it seemed like everyone, it, it seemed like all the men were gone and it was all just the women. Now, um, uh, the men that were there, they were either stupid, evil, or uh, completely absent. So non-existent, I guess, would be the best way to say it. But um, it, it, it just, it was just so weird. Uh, I mean, not seeing men there for, uh, for the most part. And Umbaku the man ape, that is his name, the character's name, whether you like it or not, is in this movie. And the thing is, you know, when he shows up on screen, I mean, he commands the screen as well. And, you know, every, you know, it kind of makes you pay attention again because it's just like, okay, oh, wow, look, he's there. Cool. You know, I'm expecting some good stuff. But um, the women, you know, independent, strong, holding their own, they doing it for themselves and all that stuff. They're running things. Who runs the world? Girls, right? But there were even times when I thought, oh my God, you, you do, you know, they were making horrible choices. Even, even Mbaku told Shuri at one point, look, you know, if you do this, this is going to happen, right? So it, it, to me, not only did it make men look bad, did this movie make men look bad, but it made the women look bad as well. So in all honesty, I just, it, it, it just didn't, it just didn't do any good for me as far as that was concerned. Um, the other issue, there sure was a, not a lot of kneeling in this movie from the men and from particular racial groups as well. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but I did. It, it really stood out. <laughs> um, and I don't know if that was a good thing or not. Um, I don't think a lot of people are going to like that. Um, I mean, it's just like, okay, you're just as bad as the people who you chastise, basically. So what is that? Irony, hip hypocrisy, contradiction, whatever. So um, the other thing... Uh, and that I have to bring up is the obvious, is the racial swap of Namor. So, um, obviously, and, I, and I've always hated this, and I've always preached about this. I, I hate it. Uh, stop doing the racial swap, gender swap, and, and sexual orientation swap. We, we, we don't need that. But, um, <laughs> I mean... It is what it is. That's how it turns out. You know, 
You have Marvel and DC. They've always been rivals, both in comic books in of, and in other media as well. So you had DC going, hey, we got Aquaman and he's a Pacific Islander uh, Samoan. And it's like, uh, Marvel's going, well, well, we, we got an Aquaman too. Uh, and he's Latino. Look, look. And, you know, Marvel says, well, we've got Falcon, a black man with wings and can fly and named after a bird. Well, DC goes along, comes along and says, well, 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 well we, we, we got a falcon too. We, we got a man who can fly with wings and is named after a bird too. And his name is Hawkman. And, but we, we'll, we'll change his race though. We'll make him black though. So, the, the, and it was the same thing with Wonder Woman. DC brought out the Wonder Woman movie first. And, um, you know, Marvel basically said, well, we have our Wonder Woman too. It's, it's Captain Marvel. See, come on. See, we got our stuff too. So, I, I can almost understand it to an extent, but it's just like, can y'all stop with this garbage of race swap? Um, so anyway, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, this movie does more harm than good in all honesty. And, and I think that was the thing about this movie. I was furious at first, but then I became disappointed about it. Um, I really did have high expectations, but as then as then again, it was like, well, what'd you expect? This is the MCU phase four and phase four sucks. And now I know everybody's going to say, well, you're just bagging on Marvel just because that's the end thing to do right now. No, it's just called phase four sucks and the leadership it doesn't know what the heck they're doing right now. And that's why it sucks. So Wakanda Forever is the bookend to phase four. That's it. That's the end of phase four. Phase five starts next year in February with Ant-Man Quantumania. I'll go see that. I'm curious to see, you know, what they'll do with that since it's the last movie, I'm sure. Um, I already pretty much have an idea of what's going to probably happen without even knowing anything. Um, Scott Lang's daughter is going to start using Pym particles as well, and she's going to be Stature, which is her name in the comic books. Um, and then there's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, so I do want to watch that as well. But the Marvels, which is the, Miss, uh, with the, which is the Captain Marvel sequel, I'm not watching that. If there's a third Black Panther movie, I don't really think I'm going to watch that either unless they make some serious changes. Okay, so um, if, 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 if you trust, trust my opinion, if you really, really, really want to watch this movie, wait a few months and, until it hits, to the do, hits the dollar theater. If you want to keep up with what everyone else is saying and what's going on and all that sort of stuff and what they're talking about, wait until it hits the dollar theater. But I think I'm being too generous with that. In all honesty, I would honestly say, wait until it, wait until it airs on TV in a couple of years with commercial interruptions. This movie, I like the first Wonder Woman movie. Uh, the sequel, Wonder Woman 84, that movie was garbage. I mean, straight up. And this is what this movie is. Uh, Black Panther was one step forward. Wakanda Forever is two steps back. And if I were being tortured and they said, you know, you can either watch Wonder Woman 84 or Wakanda Forever, if I couldn't choose death, I would go ahead and choose Wonder Woman 84. That's how bad I think this movie is, in my honest opinion. OK, so um, that's it as far as that goes. Um, I'm going to have to gripe about a, about something right quick. So I'm going to give you, if you want to turn off the video now, feel free, go ahead. So I'm going to give you five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So here we go. Um, I really, 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 really hate where the entertainment industry is going right now as far as the whole uh, identity politics and social issues go. Okay. Um, uh, I really do think that they're doing more bad, more harm than good in all honesty. Um, as long as they keep going this route, uh, uh we'll never have good stories and good, well-developed characters and good entertainment. And this has got to stop in all honesty. Okay. There were some people that were saying, you know, look, I need someone for my kids to look up to or my uh, hero to look up to. In the 90s, Charles Barkley once said, um, I'm not a role model. And a lot of people got all kinds of pissed off. And 
I was one of the very few people, if not one, if not the only person who thought, you know what, he's right. He's not a role model. Why? Because you don't know him. You don't spend time with him personally on a personal level. Um, you don't know what he's really like or what any of these people like artists, art, uh, uh, actors, uh, 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 writers or, or, or um, athletes or uh, music people. You don't know what they're really like. I mean, they put on a good face when they perform or when they're out in public, but you don't know what they're like. I mean, they could be going home and 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 abusing their spouse, abusing their children, abusing drugs and alcohol and kicking kittens and puppies left and right, basically. So you have no clue of what they're like. You really need to... Uh, the people who should be your heroes are the ones in your family namely your parents. Now, I know some of us aren't fortunate enough to have both parents in their lives, and I get that, but it should be someone within your family. A hero should be some, that you, someone that they look up to should be someone in the family first and foremost. It should be someone that they're spending time with on a daily and weekly basis. It should be, again, someone in the family you know, older siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandpa, grandparents, and uh, and it should be people at school, teachers, coaches uh, that are mentors uh, or someone at church. Those should be the people that you should look and go see and look up to first before you look at someone that's on a screen, a fictional character that's on the screen. Um, now, there isn't anything wrong with being inspired by them and saying that, yes, I want to do what they do and I want to do it as good as they do, if not better than they do. So there isn't anything wrong with that. But overall, looking at them and saying that they're my heroes or things like that, they don't know you and you don't know them. If you do meet them, well, guess what? It's probably at some sort of event and there's hundreds of other people that are around and they're not going to remember you and they're going to go to the next town, to the next state, to the next country, or they're going to go home and go back to work, basically. They're not going to remember you. And in all honesty, is 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 there's a very high chance that they're probably not going to have any more contact with you unless it's on social media of course but then you're just another fan at that point so um i think it's wrong to have people uh, to look to hollywood to make our heroes for us basically so um <sighs> one example i guess i should uh, i i have a uh, Kevin Conroy, the Batman, the only Batman, as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure, yes, Adam West is one of them as well, but Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman and it has been for the past 20 or so years. He just passed away. Cancer, another one that's gotten taken out by cancer. So, uh, been taken out by cancer. I shouldn't have said gotten, but been taken out, was taken out by cancer. And he was the voice of Batman. And People from all fans all over the world, from different economic backgrounds, political black backgrounds, religious backgrounds, and uh, uh, from uh, different races, genders, and sexual orientations, all came converged on social media on his Facebook and Twitter and said, "Thank you for being my Batman. Thank you for being an inspiration to me." And that says a lot, you know. He took a character and gave voice to it, and it was his performance and his love for the fans and for the character that that trans that that had Batman transcend all barriers, and that's what you want. I mean, yeah, we're not rich and we don't have the resources. We're not white to get all in and whatnot, but he can still be an inspiration. Halloween. Uh, we had a trick-or-treater here, you know, little boy, he was white and wearing a Black Panther costume. And I was going to give him a hard time at first, but I decided not to. And it's probably a good thing. I mean, it probably would have messed him up for Black people for the rest of his life. Who knows? But I mean, that's a char that, that's proof that a character can transcend all of that stuff. Um, uh, I work for a university and... There are two student employees, and uh, uh, and uh, I interact with them every once in a while, especially during the busy season. I do interact with them even more so. But um, 
at, at some point we started talking about you know, nerd and geek culture and whatnot. And they said, you know, both of them did. I, you know, I hate how they put gay people or gay character in this in in this show or in this movie. It seems like he that that gay character is just there just to be there. He it it, it, it is almost pointless for him to be or that gay character to be there. And I, and and you know why they said that? They were very passionate about it as well. It's because they were members of the LGBTQIA plus community. And so, and I said, I honestly agree with you because, and I gave the analogy that I always give, you know, it's like the slave owners eating the best parts of the pig and getting the part and giving the parts that they deem unworthy of eating to the slaves to eat. Basically, it's no different. So we, it, 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 we really got to stop, you know, having these people hand us a plate of crap and saying that it's steak and expecting us to consume it. But that's what they want us to do. Um, there's this meme. It's a picture at the top half of the picture. There are girls of color. And there's a picture of, of um, Halle Bailey as uh, Ariel the Little Mermaid. And the girls are saying, finally, I mean, look, that's me. I'm being represented. Well, at the bottom of the picture, there are boys of color and there's a picture of Optimus Prime from the original original Transformers cartoon show. And the boys are saying, that's me, you know, and there is some truth to that. And there are some girls that are like the boys as well. You know, they don't they don't see that, you know, and look, I'm a Megatron man straight up. I, I like Optimus Prime, but I love Megatron, you know, rise up, you know, so but you can put Goku there uh, from Dragon Ball Z and, and I'm a Vegeta man, you know, <laughs> Kakarot's an idiot. So, but you can put Goku there and it would be the same thing. You can put Bruce Lee there, be the same thing. Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, Roman Reigns, Rey Mysterio. You can put all those people there and there are people, both boys and girls will say, that's me, I like them. And it has nothing to do with color, race, or gender, uh, or, or, or or sexual orientation, basically. Uh, so I think it's really horrible that they're doing that. And it, 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 it's really, uh, I don't, I, I, I think that in all honesty, I think we're expecting too much of these people and we're giving these people more credit than what they actually deserve. And look, I know it's hard to create new characters. As someone who wanted to get into the animation industry, I wanted to create new characters and I did create new characters. But as a close friend of mine said, you know, you're an encyclopedia of, of animation. And when I created characters, it's just like, even if they had the same color scheme as another character that already existed, I basically said, no, I need to change it, basically. So I think it's really bad that you know, you have a group of people that are coming into this, the, the, into the entertainment industry and who aren't very creative. And if they, and if they are creative, their, their material's not very good and they've never been critiqued. They've never been rejected. And so they throw a temper tantrum when they put something out there and people don't like it, especially the fans. Um, so you have people who are remaking and rebooting old material and making their little switches and using it to preach and lecture to others, you know, and talk down to others, especially. And there's and they have no respect for the property or for the audience, because when you take a property that's that you're going to reboot or remake, you got to accept the fandom that comes with it. So, uh it, they recently came out that The Witcher, which is a, a series on Netflix and based that was that's based on a series of books and, and a series of video games. It recently came out that the people who are working on that show care nothing for the, 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 the for the for the franchise and they mock they mock it and they mock the fans, basically. Um, rumor has it that the people who are working on who worked on the Animaniacs reboot didn't hated the show, didn't like the original show as well. So that's just a rumor. But you have a group of people who don't care about, they never did. So, I mean, it, 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 for me, we you have a group of people who are coming in and sitting in a warm seat after everybody else's trials and tribulations with creating this stuff. You know, 
they never faced any rejection or or any, or any critique. You know, you have them come in, and it's in all honesty, it's it's lazy, it's cheap, it's stealing, and above all else, it's insulting. We should all be insulting, insulted. You know, okay, the little the the Little Mermaid. Okay, well, white people, we're done with her. Here you go, black people. You can have her now. You know, there's Ariel's carcass laying on the ground and she's barely alive. And she's got uh, particular um, um, particular fluids coming from all of her orifices, basically. And we're supposed to say, yeah, let's eat it up. And that's what a lot of people are doing, unfortunately. And coming from the black community, I know how this works. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, we're the black superheroes, we're the black cartoons and all of that sort of stuff. And, and, and ever since the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, there have been superheroes of color and of both genders. So even in the early two, very early 2000s, they've always been there. You can look up stuff about this music artist and you can look up stuff about this at particular athlete or look up something about the Bible, but you can't look up and see, well, where are all the black characters at? You know, you can't take the time to find that out. But I understand it because, you know, you didn't, in the, from the black community, that was white people stuff. That was nerd stuff. Uh, and you didn't want to be a nerd. Uh, it, 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 that it, it wasn't hood enough and it wasn't ghetto enough. So it was frowned upon basically, but they've always been here. I mean, it's just that, the geek culture is for the socially awkward and it is for the outcasts, basically the ostracized. So now that it's the end thing, well, now everybody wants to be a part of the club now and act like they know know this stuff. And it's just like, well, there have been black characters all, all the time. I mean, y'all forgive you what happened. Y'all forgot about Blade? <laughs> well, that sounds like a Dre and Eminem song. <laughs> I'm gonna turn into the vampire me. Yeah. Nowadays people want to talk like now people nowadays people want to move their fangs like they move their lips and they forgot about Blade. You know, well that's about as best as I can do it. So um, I think I think people need to really start focusing and making their own characters if that's what they really want. If you're gonna reboot a franchise, stop inserting, you know, this, that, and the other in today's audience uh, from today's world. Leave that alone as it was. It's a product of its past. If you're going to create something new, then then you can insert the things that are happening and that, that the way the world is today, basically. So, I mean, think about some of these competitions on TV. You have The Voice and you have American Idol and some person, some contestant comes on, sings a song from an artist. And sometimes the judges will say, you sang the song great, but you need to make it your own. I would argue, don't make it your own, make up your own. That way you own it, it's yours. So you can lay claim to it and go, you know, hey, that's someone copying and taking my stuff. I did that first, basically. So um, it, that, that way, I think, you have your own characters, you know, and there are some like America Chavez and whatnot. They're they're kind of weak characters, but at the end of the day, they're theirs, you know. Um, so it, there's a reason why manga and anime and from coming from Japan is is a huge hit right now. It's because look, they say they they'll look and say, and they don't care. It's like look, we don't have that many black people here. We don't have that many white people here. So this is our stuff. Now some of them are acquiescing to uh, to social culture and political culture, but very few are. But it's like this is our stuff. This is our country. This is the way we do it. And I think that's what we really need to start doing. We need to stop going into European and white cultures and trying to assert ourselves and, and, and insert ourselves, I should say, into their stories. I mean, oh, well, there could have been a black person that was a knight or a Latino that was a knight in King Arthur's court or could have been Robin, one of some of Robin's Hood, uh, Robin Hood's Merry Men. No, I doubt it because when they were created, guess what? There were probably, there were hardly any people of color there, if not at all. And they probably didn't even know they existed at the time. You know, um, same thing. There is no reason why 
uh, why uh, Idris Elba should be Heimdall in the Thor, in, in any of the Thor movies. That's Norse mythology. And when they created those gods, there was, they probably had no clue of other people existing outside of themselves. So anything, if you have a ton of myths, legends, and tons of stories that are waiting to be written and shown and told from various nations in Africa, various nations in Asia, India, and the Middle East, and various nations in Central and South America, and various nations of the Indian tri uh, Native American tribes in America that are waiting to be told. Why not do that? Make something original and do that instead, instead of trying to infiltrate white culture and make them, you know, basically, you know, put you, put you in it just because you, you want to be in it. Make up your own stuff. And I think that's one of the biggest things that's a, a problem. I, I mean, so many of these people are mocking and hating on these things and they're bowing down and saying, okay, you go ahead and do it. So in all honesty, and, 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 and that's what's ruining a lot of entertainment and Wakanda Forever is, is almost no different at this point. So, um... <sighs> That's about it. I, I just had to get all of this stuff off of my chest. You know, most of these people don't care. And to top it off, okay, this right here, Isom, a uh, brand new character uh, by Eric July. I'm not getting paid for this, by the way. He's not sponsoring me. But Eric July, he's a hardcore comic book nerd, knows a heck of a lot more than I do. And he got tired of Marvel and DC and what they were doing in comics and with the entertainment. And he pulled his uh, resources together and he wrote a story, created his own characters, hired some inkers and painter, uh, inkers and colorists from Marvel and DC. And he came up with his own comic book character. And it's actually a pretty good, good story. I can't wait for issue number two, but this, that's what we have to do. Stop trying to look to Hollywood to make our, our heroes for us and make them ourselves and in, and support and endorse the people who do make them for us. So um, that's kind of how I look at it. Sorry, this was so long. Told you it was going to be a long one. So Anyway, even without the review of Black Adam, but just imagine it would have been longer with the review of Black Adam. So anyway, uh, I think that's it for me. I think I'm done. I'm going to use this right here and I'm going to snap myself out of here. Until next time, see ya. Oh, and one more thing, Jackie. Listen to Uncle. Um, When I talk about uh, creating brand new characters, especially when it comes to race, gender, and sexual orientation, I think they should be original characters altogether. Um, and, and they should have original skills and abilities and powers as well. Now, I know that part of it is incredibly difficult. Trust me, I've tried doing that. It's, it, it's hard to uh, give a, a, a create a character with powers that haven't already been created, but at least um, make them different to the point to where, you know, they'd have different weaknesses or different skill sets and abilities and things like that. Um, but overall, it shouldn't be another Spider-Man. It shouldn't be another, uh, uh, Captain America, another Iron Man, another Green Lantern, another Batman. It shouldn't be another Thor, especially a Thor, because Thor is his name. It, 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 Thor Odinson is not a mantle to be handed down to someone else. And, that's to be clear is my point. It it, sh it shouldn't be hand hand me downs. It shouldn't be sloppy seconds. We deserve more than that, it, we, and we should demand more than that. And so, to me, that's why I say it's insulting. Okay. So again, just to be clear. All right. So uh, let me leave you with this. I know many of you are not going to agree with what I said and what I ranted about and uh, what I thought about Wakanda forever. And that's fine. I have no issues with that. No qualms whatsoever. But I, I, I don't want you to think like me, but you should at least think. OK, keep that in mind next time. All right. So until next time, see ya.